welcome to the second lecture we are still continuing the analysis method of aperture antenna by using Fourier transform. Now, we said in the last concluding part of the last lecture that till we need to find this f from the solution. So, generally how in a solution if I get a solution from a differential equation how do we solve the constants? we put boundary conditions. Here what will be the boundary condition? The boundary condition is if this is really a solution let us go back to j is equal to 0 plane and then this solution should give me the aperture field that I have assumed. So, that we will do now to find this solution f. So, so what we can say that we will go to j is equal to 0 and there we know that we have the tangential field on the aperture as this and this should be equal to. So, I have this solution, I have this solution let me put j is equal to 0 here. So, and what is its value? So, I can say that 1 by 4 pi square minus infinity to infinity on and that f on the aperture I am calling f t k x k y e to the power minus j k z into 0 e to the power minus j k x x minus j k y y d k x d k y. You see this was our solution I have just put j is equal to 0 and only the changes. So, what is f t? f t k x k y is the x y plane component of f k x k y or in uh, web guide people call it transverse component basically this is nothing but the transverse component of the f. Now, this relation you see is clearly a 2D Fourier transform relation. So, from our knowledge of Fourier transform I can now find f t what is f t k x k y f t k x k y is equal to E a x y e to the power plus j k x x plus j k y y d x d y. And I know that this aperture field exists only over the aperture generally I can say. So, but this is the exact expression from here I can also write it like this that it is S A E A x y e to the power plus j k x x plus j k y y d x d y. This is known to me. So, I can find f t. So, f t is known. Now, you said that f is not known f t is known, okay. but I will say that I have already proved that their degree of in freedom is 2. So, I will write okay, f is what f t u t plus f z z already we have found that k dot f is equal to 0 means that you can write it in terms of 
kx fx plus uh, sorry, ky fy plus kz fz is equal to 0. So, from here you can write what is fz, fz is nothing but minus kx fx minus ky fy by kz is equal to minus kx fx minus ky fy by we have already seen what is kz k naught square minus kx square minus ky square is equal to this. So, you see that f z is also known because we know f x f y, we know f t that means, we know f x f y. Now, we can find f z. So, we know f. So, we have formally. So, now we can say that what is the field? We will say the field is E x y z anywhere is equal to 1 by 4 pi square ok. So, this is the solution. So, if I know aperture field I can find f and then I can find the radiated field everywhere. Now, the question is as in case of wire antennas also that can I evaluate this integral? This integral is very difficult to evaluate in general because this k dot r it is a very rapidly varying and oscillating function. So, generally in the it is not easy to evaluate it, but we are also not interested to know what is the electric field everywhere. We want to know what is the electric field in the far zone and in the far zone that means, when r is much much greater than lambda naught that means, k naught r is large there actually there is a method uh, which is called stationary phase method actually in that method what happens that if you have an oscillating integral you can see that generally the oscillation the effect of this oscillation uh, cancels out, but near the stationary points stationary points means where the that function has a maxima or minima those stationary points there it is not an oscillating thing. So, what it says that you evaluate the integral on those stationary points generally that will be the uh, asymptotic value of the integral. So, by applying that people have found that at very large or uh, far fields the field is given by this actually in classes we derive this by stationary phase method that how this comes, but here we are not if any of you are interested you can contact me I we can share the notes that how can this be evaluated or these are available in books particularly Ari Collins book it has been shown that how to do that. So, this is ultimately the useful expression the far field of the antenna is given by this you see in terms of this f it can be expanded. So, the far field is simply related to the Fourier transform of the aperture field. Now, in the evaluation of this f t the integrals over x and y are taken over all portions of the z is equal to 0 plane on which 
non-zero values of the tangential electric field exist. If S A is an opening cut in a perfectly conducting screen, then everywhere outside S A will be 0 tangential electric field. So, then also it has been seen that for an aperture that is large in terms of wavelength, which is our case. I said that any practical antenna, aperture antenna should be sizable dimension, electrical dimension. So, there it has been seen that uh, F t is highly peaked in the forward direction means along the z axis. If you look at this diagram, so along this z axis the F t is highly peaked and you know that since the f x k x f x that formula this uh, yes this is f t is highly peaked then f z because of this is very small. So, in these zones where we are interested in the far zone and also in the both side direction we can say that uh, generally um, is uh, also here in that zone this cos theta that will be uh, their cos theta becomes 1 because theta is 0. So, here you see the expression this is 1 and f t is uh, sizable f z is that is why very small. So, radiated field can be given nearly by f t in this region and is so, that means, in most of our zone of interest if we are looking both side to the aperture then this f we can replace by f t also. If not then you will have to do, so I will write better that in general that f can be written as you see a x f x plus a y f y minus a z f x k x plus f y k y by k z. This I have already shown that how f z comes. So, I am putting that value this. So, you see you have all these values. Now, generally in the observation zone we want the whole thing in terms of spherical coordinates. So, your job is to now convert this a x a y and a z vector to spherical coordinates that means, I am giving you the clue that a x a y this you know spherical to rectangular coordinate transformation just So, with the help of this you can see that the far field can be written as j k naught Okay. And then we can write in our usual way what is E theta 
far obviously these are all far field. So, what is E theta for later reference I am writing it very very important this thing that e theta and e phi we got in the far field I can easily get h theta h phi from this. So, here you see that I have this components another point I want to emphasize that since we have this k dot f is equal to 0. So, I can say that f does not have any component in the direction of propagation vector k. So, and also we have seen that the electric field is directly related to f. So, can I say that the electric field also does not have any component in the direction of the propagation vector. What is the meaning? That means, in the radiation zone the fields are T m waves. So, basically we have superposition of T m waves in the far zone. So, from an aperture when the field is radiated basically we get in the far field the superposition of various T m waves that we can see in the spectrum. The spatial frequency spectrum shows that what T m waves are. Okay. So, this concludes the analysis part. So, by Fourier transform then if you can guess the uh, a thing uh, aperture field then you can find the radiated field. We will see one by one application of that. The first application will be open ended waveguide. You see, this shows an open rectangular waveguide. It is the wave, actually, this back side it was a waveguide, suddenly, after this at j is equal to 0 nothing is there. So, inside there was T 1 0 mode dominant mode was propagating and we see the dimensions etcetera shown. So, electric field is y directed electric field does not have any variation in the y direction electric field has variation in the x direction typically that variation is sinusoidal variation. A is the broader dimension of the waveguide, B is the narrower dimension of the waveguide etcetera etcetera. The aperture is in the z is equal to 0 plane. So, I can write the transverse component of the fields as E y all of you know this from your waveguide knowledge. I can write according to my you see coordinate, my coordinate is the center of the guide. So, field will be cos pi x by a e to the power minus j beta naught z and h x is minus e naught y w cos pi x by a e to the power minus j beta naught z not beta naught sorry 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 I am writing it is actually beta t 1 0 it should be. 
so I should not call it T actually this is later and so what is beta the propagation constant that is k naught square minus pi square by a square whole to the power half okay this is sometimes we write it as t10 also so you can write here as t10 t10 okay and what is this this is the wave admittance and wave admittance for this mode is beta t10 y not by k not okay so at j is equal to 0 what are the fields because those are my aperture fields so at j is equal to 0 the fields are u i is e not cos pi x by a and h x is minus Now, at this aperture suppose the wave was coming with dominant T 1 0 mode. So, it was seeing an wave impedance of 1 by y omega so y w 1 by that wave admittance. Suddenly, it sees free space impedance that is T 77 ohm. So, what will happen? There will be immediately a deflection there will be a reflected T 1 0 mode wave. Also, because of this discontinuity, there will be some higher order modes will get generated. So, a small amplitude of that are excited near the open end. So, that can be taken into the analysis, but as a very first cut analysis, we can neglect both of these. If we neglect them, then we can say that the aperture field is also given by the dominant T 1 0 field. I am again repeating that actually aperture field will be equal to the reflected, but the actually the uh, what has incident field plus the reflected field plus the higher order modes but I can neglect the reflected and other parts as a first analysis. So, uh, it has been found that this assumption if I made that the aperture field is as if the same as the dominant mode field, then in the main lobe of the radiation there is no discrepancy, but in the side lobes there are some discrepancy. Okay. So, this is at z is equal to 0, this is the field. So, I say that this is my E a. So, you see that that means my E x is 0. So, can I say f x will be also 0, f x is the Fourier transform. So, I will have only f y and what is f y e naught minus b by 2 to plus b by 2 minus a by 2 to plus a by 2 cos pi x by a e to the power j k x x plus j k y y d x d y is equal to 2 pi a b e naught sink k y b by 2 cos k x a by 2 by pi square minus k x a whole square, where k x is k naught sin theta cos phi k y is k naught sin theta sin phi. Okay. So, in the 
pi is equal to pi by 2 plane that means if you look at the diagram y z plane that means in this plane can you show that this plane can you show my hand in the y z plane the radiated field is given by e theta there will be what will be k x k x is 0 in this for phi is equal to pi by 2 and k y is k naught sin theta and sin phi is equal to 1. So, e theta is proportional to a phi sin phi is equal to 2 pi a b e naught sinc k naught b by 2 sin theta 1 by pi square is equal to 2 by pi a b e naught sinc b where b is equal to k naught b by 2 sin theta. It has been shown here in the this left diagram you see that this is the radiation pattern E theta as a function of V. So, due to actually why it is like this thing you see it is an interesting thing again you can show that it is an interesting thing actually along y direction that means y z plane there the along y direction the aperture illumination is uniform. So, Fourier transform of that will be what radiation pattern is sync function that is what it came and in the pi is equal to 0 plane that means x z plane you can write k x is k naught sin theta k y is 0 cos phi is 1. So, you can put in our all those solutions actually I am putting all those here you see these are my solutions here I am putting and getting e theta e phi e theta. So, here I will get the e phi value to be 2 pi a b e naught cos u by pi square minus 2 u whole square cos theta where u is k naught a by 2 sin theta. So, that has been put plot here e phi by cos theta and it shows like this. Here it was not uniform illumination and so it is not a pure sync function, but Fourier transform there. Now, a if you have at x band w r 90 waveguide, it is a x band waveguide, its dimensions we know a is 0 0.09 inch that is 2.286 centimeter and it is b is 0 0.4 inch that is 1.016 centimeter. Let lambda naught is 3 centimeter that means 10 gigahertz. Now, beam width you can find what is the beam width in the E plane, E plane, E plane means phi is equal to pi by 2, E plane where the E vector lies with the propagation direction. So, there the first null occurs at V is equal to pi, V's value you put k naught b by 2 sin theta is equal to pi. So, sin theta value if you put you know all these values it will come to be 3. What does that mean? The theta is in the invisible zone. So, sin theta is greater than 1 that means in the theta plane we do not have a null. You will have to go beyond that, but that is physically not possible. So, you will have to say that null is not there. 
so it's a very when a b is too small for a null to occur in visible space so b width is undefined here yeah. similarly in the h plane means the other plane phi is equal to 0 null occurs at k naught a by 2 sin theta is equal to 3 pi by 2 please note that at pi by 2 it does not occur because at pi by 2 we get f y is equal to 0 by 0. So, here if you solve for sin theta, this sin theta also is greater than 1, this null is also at invisible space. So, very flat beam, poor directed nature. So, for direct calculation, we have to do actual integration that can be done. We know the fields now, radiated zone. So, total power radiated, we know. So, P r we can calculate half minus a by 2 to a by 2 minus b by 2 to b by 2 by w e naught square cos square pi x by a dy dx. This will give me a b by 4 and we know from the this these two principal patterns from here we know where is the maximum radiation happening. It is along z axis. So, we can find the radiation intensity at z axis that means d p d omega at theta is equal to 0 that will be r square half y naught e theta square plus e phi magnitude square. This if you evaluate will come to be so directivity d is 4 pi dp d omega at theta is equal to 0 by pr so you do this you will get Finally, you will have to put those things values of this y w uh, this wave impedance that I have already told. So, if you do that you will get 64 a b by beta t 1 0 lambda naught cube and beta t 1 0 is pi by 4 by lambda naught square minus 1 by a square whole to the power half. Again if we do that thing that lambda naught 3 centimeter w r 90 wave guide then you can find this d becomes if you put these values 3.5. So, directivity of a open ended wave guide in X band the W r 90 the directivity is 3.5. So, it is definitely better than a dipole you see it is definitely better than a dipole, but in aperture thing it is a such large thing uh, 3.5 is not good, but open ended wave guide is a very popular antenna because in arrays it can be used, in array it is a very good element, it can uh, sustain very 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 high power compared to all those wire antennas. So, in various radar applications you have open ended wave guide and it is a very good structure, if the you see feed is coming suddenly that is becoming an antenna. So, there is no need to have a separate antenna and all those things. And on a ground plane everyone is put, so the front part is very planar. So, that is why in missiles etcetera guidance systems, they are in radar guidance system, missile guidance system it is heavily used this open ended wave guide and its antenna properties are very well known. So, thing. now we will see today we are concluding this, but we will do the same thing in case of other things 
the horn antennas because now the question is if I flare the aperture that becomes a horn and the moment I flare I, my motivation is I should get better directivity which actually will get um, by flaring. So, that we will see in the next lectures. Thank you.